Welcome to Her Story of Success, a podcast featuring stories from influential women trailblazers and business leaders who have defined and pursued their own versions of success and fulfillment. We hope these stories, lessons learned, and celebrations inspire you to believe in yourself and enjoy your own journey a little bit more. I'm Leah Glover Hayes, your host and CEO of Her Story of Success Women's Business Collective. Today, I'm very excited to share with you my friend, Lise Wilcox. Lise and I met at the CEO Global Summit in Toronto right before the world shut down from COVID in early 2020. Um, And we have been fast friends and followed each other ever since. Uh, Lise is a transformational mindset and success coach that helps high achieving and purpose driven women figure their shit out. She has been featured on NPR, ABC, Sirius XM, and more. So, Lise, welcome to Her Story of Success. We are so excited to have you. Thank you. I am very excited to be here. Can you believe we met like a week before it all just oh my, down? It was legitimately like <laughs> the week before the world just shut down. It was crazy. And I loved it because, I don't know, I just, A, I love being in a room of powerful women. Um, but what I really loved was being in a room full of powerful women using their power to help each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am just a excited about this conversation because you really focus on a woman finding her own power. And I think you and I've talked about like some people hate the word empower. Some people love it. Um, I love it because being someone that grew up poor and not having a lot, it was other people doing things and giving me things that allowed me to get to where I am, kind of that hand up and things. So I love that word, but um, everybody can have their own thing. So I'm excited to do just a little bit of your work that you do with women, how, like why you started doing it and just the transformations that you've seen. Cause I, I follow you on Instagram and I love when you talk about just um, the women and the transformation that you've seen in, in people's lives. So share with us just, What does transformational mindset and success coach mean? And then we'll kind of go back from the beginning. So I always go back and forth on my title because the and I think I actually probably introduced myself to you like this when we met, but my favorite title is professional human and real life adult. Yes. That's like the most accurate. Well, as it turns out, when you're running an online service-based business, Google hates that description because no (laughs) one's correct. So it's like, man, how did my awesome title get shut down because it's not SEO friendly. So, but I go back and forth on success coach and self-actualization and embodiment coach. The, the, the baseline, because I do have to be searchable and I do have to have some kind of like measurable objective that creates an instant trust with people. I'm a top and master coach. And I really do help people figure their shit out because I ultimately understand the human experience so deeply. And when I say I understand the human experience, it's because I understand the emotional experience. Like I'm such a passionate advocate for emotional health. And, you know, I love to yes. through my books, through my podcast, through my coaching, I am changing the global conversation on emotional health and self-love. And what that looks like is profoundly simple and profoundly complex. I simply give people the permission to be themselves. Mm. We each have like these divinely appointed gifts and strengths and talents, and we are invited into them and we are invited to use them through every challenge and obstacle and relationship we, we get into, right? And I think we spend so much of our time putting on the mask and really doing what we think or acting in ways we think will please other people. We really act in ways we think we are supposed to or that we should. And work like that. When you keep putting on the mask and you keep putting layers and layers and layers on, you start to lose touch with who you are, like who you are as the person, not Mm. you the wife, you the mother, you the employee, you the employer, like not you the something, just you the you, right? Mm. Because of my own upbringing, like I kind of got to this work accidentally, but because of my own upbringing, I was somebody who had like decades worth of masks I was wearing. And over time and through healing from my a really challenging past that included like emotional abuse and a, a really painful divorce and then breast cancer, I learned that in taking off those masks one by one, I got to this beautiful gift of who I am. And when I just gave myself permission to be who I was, 
literally everything got easier. It didn't mean that I, my life is not without right. Fun. Right. Even facing those challenges gets easier because I gave myself the permission to really love and accept and choose myself. And that's the work that I think is like the biggest gift that I can offer people. I invite them to simply be comfortable in being who they are, which sounds like really simple. It's such a big deal because when you feel comfortable to simply be who you are without judgment, without expectation, without shame, without any of the other things, that's when you actually tap into your own purpose mm. and your own expectations, your own gifts and talents. And that's how we get this massive ripple effect of change and positivity, right? When we simply just show up with like our God-given talents and we feel free to use them right. in the way that feels best for us. What are so, before we go back into your past, what are some of the transformations that you've seen in your clients? Like what, give me like maybe one example of like a woman came to you in needing this or thinking that she needed this. And then you know, was she a business owner? What was she trying to achieve? And then like, what did that transformation then, um, kind of the ROI, like, what did she re like get to you out of that? With me is the emotional equivalent of a cervical orgasm. Oh, wow. It's okay. Like, when you know, you know, and it's like people come to me like asking those questions about like what were the measurable objectives and what, what was the ROI it's such a masculine stance to take right and like oh. what did they get out of it how much did they spend and what did they get out and what was the lasting change they saw working with me is a deep internal shift it can feel a little weird a little unexpected a little bit like doubtful of like I don't really think this is going to work and then all of a sudden it's like oh my God, I totally get it, right? That's what, yes, a cervical orgasm feels like. And that's what, that's what the emotional work feels like working with me. So almost across the board, people come to me when they are at the top of their game and mm -hmm. they've, you know, they're, they're making great money. Like they're making six, seven figures and they're, they have a family or they have the husband or they have chosen to be single. And they're really, really comfortable with their choices. They've built the business. They've done the things they wanted to do and they've done the things they thought they were supposed to do. And so suddenly they're kind of looking usually in their thirties, often forties, sometimes into fifties. They're looking at this like life checklist in front of them. And they're like, Oh shit. I did everything right. So how come I still feel like this? Mm. How come this doesn't feel, how come success doesn't feel like I thought it was going to feel? How come, you know, I've been pining to be a mother and now I'm a mother. How come it doesn't feel like it's supposed to? I'm in this marriage and for all like intents and purposes, it's a great marriage. So how come it doesn't feel right? Or, oh my God, I am at the top of my game. Like I just worked with a realtor recently who's like the top in her, in her huge region. And she was like, but it's so lonely. Like I was mm -hmm. never prepared for this. And so I feel like that that's the commonality and the common thread. People come to me often because they have created this identity where they are the one that people lean on. They are the ones who have their shit together and they like, they know all the things. And then they turn around and they're like, Oh my God, I got so good at building and creating and achieving I literally have nobody to talk to, not because they don't have friends, not because they don't have support, but because most relationship dynamics are not designed to sustain that, that heaviness of like, okay, just so you know, I also have self-doubt. Like, I also wonder if I even right. want to do this job. In it, right? Right. Most friendships can't support that. A lot of marriages can't sustain that. And so my work as a coach becomes, it's like coach is such a stupid word when it comes to this work, but it's very SEO friendly. My work really becomes about creating an incredibly sacred and safe container in which you can put all of your emotional shit. You take all of those feelings that you've never been allowed to feel, that you've never been taught that it's okay. To, you've never even taught how to feel hmm. or how to communicate or how to express them. You take them, you put this, in, you put them in the container. We work together. And then because of my own intuition, because of my own education, like my years and years of experience, then I, it's like, I visualize me putting on this little like detective hat and I'm just simply observing. I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for recurring language. I'm looking for, and listening for like limiting beliefs and, oh, interesting that you kind of identified there was a block in your heart and then you had a heart attack. Like there, there's so oh, wow. interesting patterns of speech that people use. It's called quantum linguistics that we're, we're not even aware of, but absolutely have an effect on us. And my background, like my, 
um, pedagogical background operates that, you know, we have our actions and behaviors, which are directly tied to our thoughts, but our thoughts are fundamentally tied to our subconscious beliefs. And mm. our subconscious beliefs, that's the stuff we don't even know that we know, right? And even deeper, there's a layer of like, how do we not even know that we know them? Like, what's the program behind that? When people go to therapy and they talk it through, or when people go to a lot of traditional coaches and they kind of just like, they set some objectives and they're like, okay, cool. If you can dream it, you can do it. It's not enough. So yeah. at different points in your life, sometimes it's enough. When you get to the top and you're like, are you fucking kidding? Like, I still feel this way after how many years? That's when you know I'm the right coach for you because we dive so deep. Yeah. Is- all the subconscious stuff and we figure out a way of how do we learn those lessons safely while honoring them and simultaneously detaching from the story or the the pain of the story that got you there absolutely and what would be so when I hear that like I've I'm you know a huge proponent of emotional health and um, I go to therapy like I'm a firm believer talk about that um and like, why would someone come to you versus doing therapy or do, would it be both? As you know, everybody in their profession, just because you are in a particular profession doesn't mean you're good at it, right? There are excellent physicians. There are terrible physicians. There are excellent police officers. There are terrible police officers. There are excellent therapists and there are terrible therapists. There are excellent coaches. There are terrible coaches. So I feel like people are really drawn to me because they genuinely feel a connection with me integrity, authenticity. It is like the cornerstone of my business. And I'm actually using this copy on my website because I feel so strongly about it that my greatest metric of success, like what keeps me really in check Mm -hmm. is sitting around the family table with my three little girls at dinner and being very clear that like, I did what I set out to do today. Like I live in such alignment with my truth and I yeah. like I walk the talk. So people work with me because they feel that like magnetic authenticity and integrity. Almost 10 times out of 10, I hear from people, I don't even know why I need to work with you. I just know that I need to work with you. And it becomes more of that like wisdom sharing mm. dynamic. So I say that working with me feels like actionable therapy because there is so much space to consciously talk it through. And so much, it feels like guided meditation, but there's so much deep um, subconscious healing that I I don't let people stay in their story. So, you know, we tend to get stuck in a lot of talk therapy. Well, I I was going to say, let's talk uh, about, let's talk about that for a second. Cause you just did something on your Instagram. You did talk about your story and detaching from it. And so I think what I would love to do is like the person listening that, like, okay, I'm ready to go deeper. I, and that's the whole reason I started Her Story of Success is like, yeah. you know, a lot of us have reached a level of success mm-hmm. and we got to that point where we're like, either something's missing, yeah. is this really all it is? Yeah. I have more to give, learn, do, be, uh, and I'm looking for that thing. So that's why I was really excited to talk to you because you are talking to the same woman that I'm talking to like at the same stage. Like you've reached this and then... Um, I think the thing that I appreciate is like, it it can be dangerous to always Mm -hmm. look at, like, I want to achieve more. Um, but it's also not bad to also want to achieve more. Like, I think it's the the mindset. So I want to, I want to get into that a little bit. Like, when is it, when do you see it that it's healthy for people Mm -hmm. that are like, no, I, I have more in me. I want to achieve more. And then when do you see that it's, it's dangerous to always be searching and going. Can we talk about that for a little bit and then talk about your, like your story? Yeah. It's intention centered. So if the Mm -hmm. intention is like, I have to become like the best coach in the world, it's like, why? So I can serve the most people or so that I can have the ego accolade of like, I'm like when Taylor Swift needs a coach, she calls me, you know, like that kind of thing. Right. So we have these competing, they tend to be competing and they, they quote unquote, shouldn't be, they should be working in together in a nice blend. Internally, we have these masculine and feminine energies and that masculine energy that we each possess. And usually women at the top of their game have a ton of masculine energy because it's so drive oriented. It's do achieve, do achieve, do achieve. If I want to to achieve more, I just do more period. And then you have this feminine energy that is so much like more flowy and almost like honey, you know, it's this, that's sink into surrender. It's be in the flow. It's holding on to the vision and letting the details fall into place, which for a lot of us, 
tends to be more challenging because that's so foreign. It's like, cool. How do I surrender? Cool. How, like, give me the checklist. How do I, exactly. Right? Yes. That's all masculine. Because right? you know, do achieve. It's like, if I do yeah. this, if I learn this new skill, if I go do this, then I can accomplish more. Oh, I'm so it's interested in this. Example. I had a client last year who had like like she was her own Phoenix and she had created this business. She was earning six figures and she was like, I just know that I can do more of this. And I think that I'm think I'm ready to scale. And when people come to me, they don't, they're, they're not looking for a business coach because I'm not a business coach, but I'm also not just a relationship coach. I'm not just a life coach. It's like this very holistic experience because of the emotional body. Like our emotions are all these feelings that are constantly giving us feedback as to what still needs to be healed. And when we heal it, we show up differently in our business, show up differently in life. Anyway, so I had this client and she was like, I've, I've reached this one upper level, this like ceiling of success. And I think I'm going to double it. Like I'm going to scale up. And so we just kind of worked through it and we we're like, all right, you earn this much now for you to double that. What would that look like? Well, I'd have to hire a team. And what would that look like? Okay. It would like, we went through all of the, like the intention behind that. And suddenly it was like for her to double her growth, which she absolutely was capable of doing. She actually lost everything that she loved and valued. So wow. We, let's yeah. pause so on that be, for a second. Yeah. So let's go into that a little bit slower. Okay. So this woman comes to you because yeah. she's like, I'm at the top of my game and I think that I can double. For sure. What were the things that she loved that when you went through this process of this is what it's going to look like, what was it that she was going to lose? So this is how we bring it back to values, right? Like values are fundamental to the work that I do with people. And when we use values, which is something we never, ever think about when we use values as the, the metric of success, like, am I living in alignment with my values? Yes. Cool. Success. No shit. So her values were like freedom, time, flexibility, family, authenticity. And for her to scale, it was like, oh my God, I lose all the freedom. I'm so much more beholden to, I don't have any flexibility anymore because now I've put like a team in place. Oh my God, I'm putting a team in place. I lose everything I love about my own client interaction. And suddenly it's like for her to scale, sure, she would have made twice as much money. And she lost literally everything else that she loved about our business. And so it was like, well, wow. that's stupid because now I don't live within any of my values. So in order, in answer to your first question, like when does that get dangerous? Right there. When, mm. Right. Of what our objective and intention is when we are not intention centered, when, and which is a very feminine energy and a very feminine metric of success, when we are not intention centered and when we are not operating in alignment with our values or really using values as the foundation upon which we build literally everything else, that becomes the dragon you can never catch. You can chase it and you will never catch it because that's when nothing will ever be enough. When you shift that back into like, oh my God, who am I? What is important to me? What is my purpose right here at this level in my current moment? Like, what does that all look? And even more important, what does that feel like? When you are so open and honest yeah. because you've had that safe space to communicate it, that redefines your foundation from whence you operate. And when you have that foundation really clear, then you know with like, a hundred percent certainty what you have to do to achieve next because all of the really important wow. additional stuff is in check. So what did that look like for her? So you guys get to this foundation of like, okay, you actually don't want to double because you'll lose everything. Was she disappointed? Was it, a, was there a sad, like what did she just all of a sudden love where she was at and completely content? Like what did that kind of like, what did next look like in, in that work? The two words that come up, or I would say three words that come up almost again, almost a hundred times out of a hundred. I feel free. I just feel so content. And that was magic that those are like three consistent words that come up in feedback. That's like, Oh my God, I didn't even know it, but I felt like I had this weight on my chest for 30 years and now like it's gone. And, you know, I have that freedom. I have this renewed clarity. This, mm. There's this profound simplicity that comes from simple contentment, right? Yeah. Like we're chasing happiness and that's that dopamine high, which is not a healthy thing. It's like you feel grounded and content. Suddenly we're looking at inner peace 
as a new metric of success. It's like, great, you've got money in your bank account, you've got a roof over your head, awesome. All of that is like important and it's good and it feels safe. How do you, how does your safety feel inside, right? What does that look like? Mm. What does that feel like? Because if that, if you don't feel safe in your one true home, which is like your being, nothing else matters because nothing else will ever feel like it's enough. You will constantly feel like you have to over deliver, over perform, you know, overdo it in every way. All of that leads to burnout. So suddenly we're like, we can avoid all of that other icky stuff simply by getting crystal clear on who we are, what we value and what we intend to do. Golly. Okay. Well, obviously there's like 5,000 things I want to ask you about. And I'm like, but then I'm like, I don't want to like ask you to do free work with me. So, um, <laughs> I just have like literally a thousand thoughts. I hope the, uh, the woman listening is like, okay, like let's dig in a little bit. So when you said that, like, um, city, like when you have the contentment, you have the money in the bank, you have where you feel safe. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I know we're in coronavirus, but mm-hmm. Uh, it's towards the end of the year. I just went to Disney World with my husband. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big, before I started my company, I said, I do not subscribe to the hustle and grind. Mm-hmm. I want no part of that. Mm-hmm. Am I a hard worker? I have had a job since I was 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Like I've paid for myself since mm-hmm. I was 12 years old. I bought my cheerleading uniforms in high school. Like I've always done that. And so to me, it didn't, it doesn't mean I'm not going to work hard. I just don't ever care to be known for being such an extreme hustler in her business. Um, Cause I just think that that's dangerous and it is, it, but that's not my personality. To your point, when you get to know yourself, I'm like, I am driven by fun. I'm an Enneagram seven. I want to enjoy my work. When people are like, oh, how do you choose who you interview on your podcast? I'm like, the people that I want to learn from. <laughs> like, if I find someone that inspires me, I'm like, hey, uh, I would love to to interview you. That's why you and I are talking. Um, but I love that when you said like the contentment piece, because what I fight with all the time is I think because I've struggled my whole life and I've worked for everything and I was in debt and out of debt. And like now I'm in this place that uh, my husband and I are financially decent. We've, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know how much I want to share. I'm just going to be transparent. We have no debt. We were, you know, selling a house, buying a house, didn't have to take any money out of savings because we made well on the house. And there's a, there's this place lease of guilt Mm -hmm. that I'm not working hard enough because Mm -hmm. it's not a struggle. Mm -hmm. Is Mm -hmm. that normal? Literally I'm, I'm in Florida, like in the most beautiful place. And I'm, and i checked out. Like I've got my out of office on, I am not responding to things. And I like a moment I felt guilty. I'm like, I shouldn't, I don't deserve. I don't know if it's, I don't deserve to have this because I haven't worked hard enough. Is that, do you find that a lot with people? I'm like, I don't know what it is. Why can't I just be like, no, you don't have to deserve and earn everything that you get. There are blessings in life. And I want, I want to learn how to just enjoy the blessings. That's all limiting belief. It's all subconscious. It And again, like observationally, that little hat of mine goes on and it's like, you said five or six things that it's like, we would explore that together, right? So w- when did you decide that success follows struggle or that su- <gasps> struggle success, right? When wow. did you decide that in the absence of struggle, you were actually experiencing an absence of success. And that's, that's just like a couple of highlights of like what stands out. That is also incredibly masculine driven, right? If I want to be achieving success, it means that I have to be on, period. That fear of stillness is another one of those little clues which comes, to, which almost, almost across the board, like almost across the board, when people come to me, that's one of the things that's hidden, right? Like, I, I don't even know what it would look, to, look like to slow down because I'm terrified of stillness. Like what would happen? And it's like, okay, so that is an amazing indicator. If our feelings are just feedback and that feedback is always giving us insights as what still needs to be healed. You know, as the practitioner, it's like there's some feminine energy that needs to be healed there because mm. if we're afraid of stillness and we're afraid of being in the flow or we're a little bit resistant to just having some downtime or, oh my God, getting our needs met 
and attended to, or even deeper, experiencing pleasure and joy, then suddenly it's like, ah, okay. So what kind of a wounded feminine energy is at play there that we need to explore and then look at where did that come from? What's the origin story? You know, zooming out a little bit more, looking at the overview of what your own origin story is, then immediately it's like, okay, interesting. How foundational or fundamental is that story to your success now? And is there another competing story or conflicting story that's like, if I don't have that pain and if I don't have that struggle, who the fuck am I? Like, then what happens? If I release that narrative that I overcame what I overcame, oh shit, now, now what do I do? Right. And so all of that, like from, from that, like, from that, like very brief anecdote about going to Disney world, um, that's the kind of like explosion of emotional health questions that comes up for me. With <laughs> it's not a fixing or a healing. As I said, like, it's so, yeah. there's nothing more powerful than somebody bearing witness to your experience. So having the opportunity that I have to work with people and to meet women like you who like, they have this stuff. It's not a failure. It's just the next feedback of like, you've come so far that you're actually being invited to heal on an even deeper level. Like how fucking oh, awesome wow. is that, right? And yeah. I get so turned on by this work because it's like, oh my God, I get to be the person who facilitates you busting through that ceiling and who, uh, who allows you or like helps create or facilitate that freedom to move on from the way it was and step into like courageously embody what is. It's so powerful and it's, I'm obviously so passionate about it. I love it. Well, let's talk about like, so you wrote a book. Mm. I mean, let's talk about that for a moment. And, um, you know, a, a th people write books for different reasons. Mm. Sometimes, you know, like songwriters, they'll write a, a song and it's, it's going to change the world, but really they wrote it for them to get their own yeah. thoughts and feelings out. So when you wrote this book, was it truly for you to like, for your own self-love and for your own work that you did, or did you have a mindset of, I, I have already done the work and I want to put this on paper so that someone else can get healing from reading this book? Like what was it a mixture of both or what did that look like? I'm and who did you write it? I'm a really big believer that you can only like the best books are written when you no longer need to write them. So I got to a place that like, oh. I, I definitely I wrote the book that I needed for so long. Like I wrote the it's a like a self-love manifesto. I wrote the book that I absolutely needed for so much of my life. And only when I got to the place of I no longer needed that book that's when I was able to write the book. And frankly, it's all wow. Because it's like, oh, fuck. I didn't need this <laughs> Why couldn't I have written this when I needed it? That's so funny. You know, that's, I was, um, I interviewed someone, one of my very first interviews, and she said, um, she said, you know, you don't share your wounds, you share your scars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, when you said that, it, that's what it made mm -hmm. me think of. It's like, oh, you, you wrote this because it was no longer a wound. It was a scar. That doesn't that's mean right. that to your point, it doesn't mean that you don't still deal with self-doubt. It doesn't mean that you're not doing this work for yourself daily. It just means you have gotten to that place yeah. that it is a scar and not um, not an open wound. Cause, and I love that analogy. It's kind of disgusting, but like, you know, if you, if you have a wound and something that you're dealing with and you share it, then people can put sand in it. They can, you know, they can make it, make it worse, but a scar, it can be, it can be sore, yeah. but it's, you're not going to continue to do more damage. Yeah. Right. So I love that. So let's talk about the book a little bit. So you wrote it for, um, yourself that you needed earlier in life. So yeah. who did you write it for now? Like when you were writing it, did you see a woman or did you see a person or what did that look like? And, and what is the reader going to get out of this book or what are they going to experience by reading it? It, it really is a compendium of everything I learned in a, in a lifetime uh, regarding self-love and emotional health. And it, it feels like um, equal parts memoir, self-help and honestly like you're cozied up on the couch with a look at a really good and trusted friend it's such a beautiful toot toot it's a beautiful book to read <laughs> because it actually does all those things it's really funny it's also really poignant like it takes you on an emotional roller coaster because it's about 
the human experience as witnessed through my own eyes so and my own heart and my own mind like all of the all the things and what's so beautiful about that is that the human experience is profoundly isolating and while we are social creatures we are constantly looking to the group like genetically biologically to make sure we're not dead like we have to we have to fit in so that we <laughs> we are alive and we've evolved so far past that that while we definitely have this deep desire for connection we are having all of these feelings and we think we're having them in isolation. And then when we feel like we're having these challenging feelings like loneliness and, and self-doubt, whatever it is, when we feel like we're having them in isolation, then we pile a bunch of shame on them, which uh. is even further. And actually like what this book does, it's like, Hey, I see you. Like I too am a human. I too have felt this feeling. And I feel like it kind of blows the doors off of like, I love to say to people like, you're special, but you're actually not special. <laughs> like, you know, like this doesn't make you special. Everybody is having the same emotional experience. Yes. yes. It looks different in all of our lives and our own circumstances. Yes. And it is the same emotional experience that we're having and sharing. So for me, this book is like, it's perfect for somebody who's going through that waking up process, you know, mm. to the beginning of my own waking up and realizing I had a perfect life from the outside in. I had a perfect life and it hit me in the face when I was like, Oh my God, how come this isn't enough for me? I'm like looking around my seven bedroom house and my good looking husband making me coffee in our like $1,200 coffee maker and my three little girls. And I'm like, this is like this bougie, perfect life. And what the hell is wrong with me that this isn't enough? And I heard this download of a voice that comes to me in difficult moments. And it's like, this is not enough for you because you are not enough for you. And all of a sudden it was- Wow. Oh, wow. So you're saying you had a husband, three girls, three children, mm -hmm. a big house, mm -hmm. and you were not enough for you. Mm -hmm. What did that look like? What did, what does that mean? Sucked. <laughs> it sucked. When you constantly look outside yourself for validation, for the feeling uh, of enough, for feeling loved, which is what we are encouraged to do um, culturally in most families. Like we are encouraged to like, oh, you know, have you met my son? He's a high profile lawyer. Like, hi, have you met me? Here's the business that I've built. Hey, have you met my children? They're all high. It's like we attach ourselves wow. to things beyond us. And when you get to this wake up point and which COVID frankly has invited, everyone to do and only yes not everybody has responded in the same way and I get that everybody's circumstances are different for a lot of us we have been able to respond to this invitation and still some of us are skipping over that self-reflection and just and going beyond but we have these moments of invitation to be like what does this all mean like what is my role what why am I here like in the big picture sense why am I here and who am I without this relationship who am I without this business? Who am I without this family? Who am I without this accomplishment? You know, what we were saying earlier, oh my God, who am I without this pain? And wow, away, wow. We get really next level clear on, okay, so that's who I am. Next step, how do I yep. accept her? How do I love her? How do I check in with her needs? How do I get really clear on what would make her feel really good right now? We are virtually never supported to do that in our lives. We are constantly pushed to take care of and like seek. And do you have lots of like kids go to school? Do you have any friends? Who are your friends? Oh my God, are your friends? It's like, whoa, 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 dial it back. You know, relationships, same thing. We are pushed towards relationships big time. We are pushed towards these like measurable outcomes of success and we constantly overlook the internal metric of success, which is just like, you know what? I'm good. You know, we're conditioned to think we have to ride this emotional roller coaster of extreme highs and extreme, extreme lows. lows. This inner metric of success is kind of feeling good. Like I'm just I want to, I want to dig into, cause you, when you, when you said, who am I without my kids? Who am I without my husband? Who am I without this business? I mean, that hit me so hard because, you know, especially for entrepreneurs and, and like, even if you're not an entrepreneur and you've got this, you know, badass or high profile job, mm -hmm. like really who are we, we without that? But then you add on the layer of, and I'm not yet a mother, mm -hmm. like 
let's talk about how you separate that. Like what, what has that looked like for you and, or like clients that come to you that didn't realize that that is what, that they've attached that and they, that it needed to be separate. And then how do you even like, how do you acknowledge and see her? Cause I'm like, literally who am I without being the CEO of her story of success? Well, and that is the work, right? Like that's, yeah. that's what the work is. Gotcha. And that is digging into that and finding is. her. Okay. And it's, some of it is, it's identifying subconscious beliefs or limiting decisions along the way and figuring out how do we, how do we release that? Some of it is generationally passed down. Um, mm. I like uh, some of it's past life stuff that we just, we keep hanging on to until we interrupt the pattern and heal it. Um, I shared on Instagram the other day, this story of, I just, I went for a walk in the woods and I saw that. like this, this is so cool. I'm actually writing another book and hosting a different podcast about like this experience, because these experiences happen to me all the time where I'm like, I ask for a message or I ask for a sign, or I'm really sitting in reflection. And then like, I go to the woods in small town, Canada, and I meet this guy and I have this conversation. He's like a 76 year old man. And we ended up just talking in the forest. And he was telling me how, when he was a kid growing up, they used to line up all the kids in the class from smartest to dumbest and how he no oh yes and he was always at the the dumb end and um then you know that conversation goes ever so slightly into but you know this dog that I'm walking it's actually my son's and I just wanted to take the dog for a break because you know they're renovating their house because they live in this four million dollar house in this super swank neighborhood in the city of Toronto and he is after all the SVP corporate of this major bank and he had and like I'm just I'm an observer, right? Like I'm just bearing witness to the experiences. So I'm just like listening to all this information. And as the conversation goes on, it's like his son has this education and this degree and this degree and this accolade. And he was asked to be the president of the bank and he turned it down. And his daughter in the meantime, is this like international business lawyer or facilitator for international in the, in the hag. Like both of his kids are exceptionally high achieving when you look at it on paper, I have no idea what they're like as people, but on paper, they've got like all the check marks. Right. And to me, it's like, but how fascinating is this? They were raised in a family by a man who was told he was constantly the dumbest kid and he didn't get graduate high school. So some of those stories, even when they come to us and they manifest in, but look at me, I own a bank. Like I run the bank. Do you know how cool? Who are you? take you out of the $4 million a year salary. I want to talk about who you are, like what makes you tick, what lights you up, what brings you joy, what, why are you here? Like, what do you have to learn? What do you have to teach? Right? So it's that work that we start to strip that stuff away. And mm. we, and we do inherit that generationally, even if we're never told we inherit it, it is a pervasive message of like, well, it was this way for me. Therefore, when I have kids, I want to make sure it's a different way for them. And that's just, that's part of the human experience too, that learning and growing. But, um, it's just, I think it's so fascinating. I guess a question is why, why do you, um, not un- only, but like, why do you work with women? Cause it seems like you, you do focus more towards women. Obviously I have her story of success. So mm-hmm. I'm a little bit focused on women too and, and non-binary people, but, but why, why did you not expand? What, what, what is it that made you, you say, I want to work with women? I oh, do. you do. And okay. I market to women. And that's only it, that's only a marketing thing. I'm doing an additional um, coaching certification in 2021. It's Yay. like a year long program and it's focusing exclusively on love, sex, intimacy, and relationships. And I think the intention behind that is to take all of this and work with couples. So work with one partner, work with the other partner, and then work with them together that condenses like years, like months, if not years of relationship therapy into like a three-day window because I can get to the heart of all the programs behind the stories in such a rapid period of time. So, and I do, I have male clients. Um, I only market to women simply because that's the way that it's been for like the last six months. My, my business has grown and scaled so much since March that it's been like a triage of like, okay, who can I speak to right now? Yes. That has been the focus has been on women. Um, but I do, I have male clients and I love working with them. I love it. Um, okay. So next year I'm mm-hmm. going to interview you again, mm-hmm. once you have that, cause I want to talk about the, the couples thing, but mm-hmm. let's talk about scaling your business for a moment. Mm-hmm. So to, when I'm very interested in hearing that, because to me, like you're an you're a coach or an individual. How do you scale your business when you work with individuals? What does that look like to scale are your business? You, are, are you a fan of The Office, the American version of The Office? 
Love it. Okay, so you know that episode where Jim is about to go in the golf course and he's like, I'm going to do something I have never done before. Try. So <laughs> I haven't had a freelance job. I had a freelance job up until February. Oh my God, I love you. Like, I didn't make a ton of money, but I made like a bit of money in February. And then I coached on the side and I just, I didn't really. What was your freelance work? Oh, social media management. Okay. Uh, so, and it was just like this really stable job, but it also demanded my time. And so when I had clients, I had clients, I didn't do any marketing that kind of came to me because they felt a connection. And I was very comfortable with that. Right. And I still had like amazing clients. February came, um, the, it's a very long, complicated story, but basically we were all let go overnight without any notice, without any pay. And it was like, oh my God, I'm a single mom. March hit. Suddenly COVID was here and it was like, I have to recession proof my business. I guess I better start really trying. Like I got to double down on my own marketing um, efforts. And so I did that. And in doing so, I attract, I like, I raised my rates. I got really clear about what specifically I could offer and who specifically I could help. Cause I help humans. My marketing is about who specifically I can help in them in a, the best, most effective way. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so scaling for me all of a sudden looked like not only really focusing on who that was and growing and scaling my marketing efforts. It also meant like I had online courses that I just never talked about. So it meant like getting a Facebook team in place and really starting to focus on building a newsletter and creating more options to work with me that wasn't one-on-one. Um, ah, okay. I launched the book in the middle of the pandemic as well, hit like bestseller status. So all of that happened at the same time. So all of a sudden I went from having a freelance job and a couple of coaching clients when it felt good to do so, um, to really like really establishing myself, which I've done as like a top coach in the industry and really yes. attracting the people I need to work with while also running a podcast, doing the book. I developed a product line, like going all that stuff while still being like a solo parent of three girls, right? <laughs> so it's like, it's it's grown a lot. My website, I hired somebody to do my website in the spring and I already, I've outgrown it because like my, I went back to do a master's, like yeah. offerings have changed. It's so tight. It's so focused, but everything that I had been doing, like I outgrew so quickly that it's just a matter of playing catch up with. Um, I'm so proud of you. I mean, I met you at the beginning of March, so I've been able to see, but I didn't know, like, all. I mean, obviously I couldn't have known all the things, but just to be able to see you just blew up and I was just like, oh my gosh, that's super crazy. Um, but the other thing is like, what, what did that look like hiring people? Cause you hire, like, who did you, or I mean, you might've had like, I don't know if you have employees or like actually just, um, 1099s, but what did that look like? as you like, okay, I need to grow. So, cause there's always that chicken or egg, like I got to invest, but I don't have a lot. And being a, a mom of three, that kind of gets scary. So what did that look like when you started to, to really scale and grow? It was kind of insane because I'm such a lone wolf and I really pride myself on being a lone wolf. And like, again, this was part of my own process and how do I detach from overcoming my own story, right? Because the story was like, are you kidding? Like, do you know what I've overcome? And it's like, okay, how do we let go of that and just be present with who you are? Um, but yeah, the first thing I did was hire a VA, which was amazing because there's stuff that I'm really not good at doing and I don't want to be good at doing it. And so I have made a commitment to myself to, in order to serve the people I want to serve in the best way I can while still being present in my family and being present in my work and, oh my God, taking care of myself, I only do the things that I'm really good at. And so it was a matter of trusting somebody and I have to be like, I don't want to do this research. Can you figure out how to make Instagram shoppable? And it was like an hour later, it was done. You can buy stuff on my Instagram. It's like, oh my God, that would have taken me a week to put into place, right? Yes. And hiring a Facebook team too. And it, that's not like, I'm not sure I'm going to continue with that, but certainly for a few months. Well, seasons. Yeah. Totally. Right. Understanding too, like you, there's, there's seasonality of yes. running a business and the things that you need today, you might not need tomorrow. And totally. what you needed a month ago, you might not need in six yeah. months. So I love that. As a business owner, there's just like, oh my God, there's 5,000 things you need to do a day. And it's like prioritizing. And how do you like, which one comes first? I'm focusing on, on my email marketing. And then you're like focusing on social media and then you're focusing on content and like all, just all of these different things. And, and when you are very clear on what your values are, and what your intentions are as a person that shapes your business. And when your business is, is shaped in that same way, 
that's when you can make really like strategically informed decisions on what serves you best so that you can serve best. I love that. Hmm. So what you're saying is I need to work with you. That's what I'm catching from that. <laughs> that <good> awesome. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. You're so much fun. So, um, I do, and I did want to say, I love that even on your website, you know, you have the people that, that talk about you, you know, you do have an entrepreneur, you also have a public health nurse. So this mm-hmm. isn't just for entrepreneurs. This is just for, I think, I think the word ready is coming to mind, like women that are ready to do the work, to go deeper and to make that investment, like working with you is not free. It's not, it's not cheap. Right. And so that's one of the things that, you know, I I do um, talk to a lot of consultants and a lot of um, different, different types of coaches and and things. And um, that's always the number one, you have to be ready and willing to make the investment and, and not in a like, Oh, I know I need to do it. Mm -hmm. That is not the time to do Mm -hmm. it. It's in the, I am ready and want to, and am excited to do this work. And that's kind of like, that's also a catch 22, because when you're on the other side of that and you're looking back, you're like, I actually would have paid any amount for that experience because you cannot put a price tag on what I just, on the value I just received. When you're looking at it, it's like, I'm sorry, you want to charge me what? Like how much is it to work with you? Because you don't yet have the experience unless you're somebody who's invested in yourself before of like, oh, if she's pricing it like that, I know it's worth it because I know that there's an integrity behind it. Some people don't operate at that level of integrity, but it's like, we're talking about work that is bringing you home to yourself, that is giving you and facilitating and like growing and supporting that level of inner peace and contentment. And like, frankly, then I'm like, oh, it's a, bargain to work. Like I should probably raise my prices again. It's like, that's such a bargain because, oh my goodness, we are talking about learning how to be incredibly comfortable and successful for whom you are, period. Yeah. I look at it to uh, a couple of different things. One, I look at it as I see what I'm wanting to build and um, think about a home. The same person that, that digs the foundation Mm -hmm. and sets that foundation is not the same person Mm -hmm. that is hanging your light fixtures. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look at like where, where people are, are when they're ready to hire you, it, to me, they could hire you in, in different areas. Like I did, I hired and spent literally Mm -hmm. the most amount of money I've ever spent in my entire life. Mm -hmm. When I was an employee, knowing that I wanted to become a CEO because I was like, I am not a CEO yet. And I have to do the work to become the person that is the CEO so that I can quit my job and do that. Right. It has to happen as that person. Cause she's, she's a coach, you know, and it, it, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of dollars that I spent the literally the most ever. And I'll tell you, it was, it was worth it 10 times over because if anything, maybe what I needed out of that was the confidence to, to know if I've invested into this and I've done the work, I'm ready to be a CEO. Yes. Does that make sense? Like just sometimes the doing the work. That's yeah. The, that's the kind of decision a CEO would make. And so that's yes. what I mean. It's like, if you can see that beforehand, it's a gift. You can always see it after the fact, but it's yeah. like, okay, so what would the, like, what would my higher self what kind of decision would she make? How would she show up? How would she handle yes. it? Yes. Like when we can get quiet with that, it's like, same thing. I, again, I hired somebody in April to do my website. And by September, I hired somebody brand new to do it and spent like an exorbitant amount of money on it because I was like, hang on a second. What does the next level vision of me do? Does she worry? Does she, does she Google how to make Instagram shoppable? No, she does not because she's too concerned with how how her clients are doing and what she's building here and now. Right. She doesn't do that. It's like, okay, right. She doesn't do that. Yeah. And same thing with the website. It's like, I know, I know what my future looks like professionally. And it's like, 
And my current website doesn't support that vision. So like, ah, right. I got to find a way of supporting that vision, right? Got to get there. We can create that well, and I will say too, you know, the, for you listening, like sometimes you might need to do something to show yourself you're ready. Cause what I did before I spent the, an, uh, ungodly amount of money mm-hmm. on my coach. I, because I've struggled with, um, not believing that I'm disciplined or like having like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a disciplined person. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know what, I'm going to sign up for a much less amount, yeah. um, for a, it was called fit females at the gym that I go to. And it was like 5am three days a week. And you do 6am the other two days a week. So it was like literally working out between three and five days a week. And I, and it was for six weeks. And I was like, when I do this, Mm -hmm. then I can show myself that I'm ready to make the investment, the dollar investment. And it will give me confidence that I'm ready to do the work because I've, I've done this thing for a set amount of time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like, if someone's like, Oh, am I ready to work with Lise? Either like, hell yes, I'm ready. And I'm ready to sign up or it's okay. I think that I am, I know I need it, but I need one little thing to show me that I'm ready. Do you have any like guidance? Or like, if someone's like, I think that I'm ready, but I'm not quite sure. Is there something that you would encourage them to look up or get your book or, or what is it that they could do before they're ready to like invest in themselves with you? Book a speed date with me. So like how, how I struggle. Oh, what is this? <laughs> tell me, tell me. Usually people like people go to my website or they go to my Instagram or they read the book or they listen to the podcast and they're like, okay, like I'm kind of sold. Like I already know that she's the right person for me because you can't fake that. Like I either am the right fit for you or I'm not, period. There's not like, there's not a lot of gray area. So what I encourage people to do is they book like a 15 minute speed date with me and it gives us a chance to be like, what are you specifically looking for? And how can I specifically facilitate you getting there? And is that a right fit? And then it's like, will you accept this rose? <laughs> like, is, is, is this a good fit for us to go forward together? And from there, um, people can work with me for six months. Or what I've really started to encourage people to do more now, which is a technique from my master's training, is that we do a breakthrough day. And we take eight Ooh, hours. Awesome. And it feels like six months of coaching condensed into one day because we have so much access to the subconscious mind. It feels like, wow, like six months of, of really of therapy and of coaching in a, in an eight hour day. And for the clients that I serve who have so much on their plate, who, yes, a six month mentorship is great to have that level of support, particularly in navigating a, um, a transition. But yeah. That level of clarity and have a couple of follow-up calls after the fact, it's like, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. It's like, Oh, I need that. Like, I just need that because I know I'm stuck and I have to be able to get to my own next level. And I need to kind of get there like right now. Oof, I love that. Um, gosh, I'm just ready to sign up with you. I do want to, um, just kind of wrap up on where people can find you. And, um, I know that you've listened to my podcast, you know, the last question I ask is always, um, how do you define success today? So I'll give you just a second to think about that when you're telling us where we can find you and how we can connect with you. LiseWilcox.com is the hub. That's my website. It's about to be brand new and shiny, but like right now it, it's, it's the hub. I'm on Instagram every day. And between the two of those, like at least Wilcox or LiseWilcox.com, that is the best place to connect. And will you spell your name for us? L-E-I-S-S-E. W-I-L-C-O-X. If you just even type in L-E-I-S, you'll probably find me on Instagram. <laughs> oh, I've got some SEO going. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And then at least how do you define success for yourself today? Uh, being able to identify what feels good and acting on it. Mm. That's beautiful. Well, I appreciate you. So we'll definitely have to have you back when you start working with couples. Um, Anyone that listens to me knows that I'm uh, passionate about being um, a wife and being a great wife and and just loving that experience. And so I look forward to to sharing your information again when we uh, dig into the couples. And we just have so much more to talk about. We didn't even touch on you have had breast cancer. You went through um, a divorce and have come out this beautiful, amazing woman that has, um, I just can't, and it's not about your children. I know like your, 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 your identity is not wrapped up in your children, but I will say I am excited to see the women that your girls become because they've had the opportunity to learn from you and to witness your own growth and also 
your own grace. I am so excited to see your girls when they, um, when they get to see their mom give, give herself grace. I think that's one of the most beautiful things that you can teach your children. And that's something that I'm focused on teaching mine um, is just learning how to, to give yourself another's grace. And so I think that it's beautiful. Thank you. And what comes with having, like, sometimes it really annoys them that they have a <laughs> like, you know, like, we know, just let us complain about something. But, <laughs> but they also, they just get to be themselves. Right. And all, all three of them are unconditionally loved and accepted. Mm-hmm. Exactly. For who, and I have identical twins. So there's like a lot of narratives about how twins are supposed to be the same. You no, know, like all three of the girls are so in this environment, they are so loved and appreciated for whom they are just because Ooh. they're them. I love it. And I love you. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being my guest today. And I'm just excited to share this with my beautiful audience. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. To subscribe, click the circular icon. And to watch the latest episode, click the video on the right. If you listen to podcasts, check out Her Story of Success on your favorite podcast platform. See you next time.